What's up everybody, Joshua August here. Welcome to In Car Productions. This is the June 2022 Word. Pretty soon I'll be doing these like three months. I'll be doing like December and July, but that's just the prophetic life and we're always looking forward. We're always looking ahead. I'm actually a very sentimental person and I actually believe that is because partially I'm always looking ahead. Maybe I don't enjoy the present long enough. And then you're, you go back and you're extra sentimental. I think prophetic people might be extra sentimental because we're always looking ahead. Somebody said that to me in ministry school and I never even realized I did. Uh, but that's also a great reminder to uh, for you to enjoy the present, to enjoy the time, um, what you're going through, the season, the relationships, the friends, because um, some things you only do once. That includes uh, having children, babies, and uh, or uh, interns or businesses or, or, or relationships they just only last for a season amen but once again thank you for watching thank you so much you new subscribers i love you uh please hit the bell or else sometimes i'll post videos and you won't get notified and um, once again check out my new book biblical numerology it's doing super well on amazon and i thank you personally everyone who's purchased one it's a great two to three hour read i'm actually not a big fan of long books except for the bible I'm working on it though. Um, but in two to three hours, you'll get an amazing biblical foundation. I go over all the numbers, almost every scripture I could find. I go into Hebrew. I go into my personal journey with numbers. And once you get number fever, once you get number fever, uh, you may never go back, amen? But it's just an incredible way. And God will talk to you through your love language, through the way you are. If you like humor, if you like music, he talks to me through songs and comedy, numbers, people, and there's no limit to what he can do. He can use a donkey. He can use rainbows. He can use the weather, your family, children. Oh my God, don't get me started. Like I, little kids in youth group and children's ministry used to nail me. Uh, God would speak to them. And I'd be like, you don't have clearance for that. Shh, you just, shh. Uh, but God can use anything he wants. Amen. Even Samuel, a young child, 12 years old, prophesied to Eli. Amen. All right. So right off the bat, I've been seeing lots of butterflies and they just keep uh, coming back. Uh, into my life and I just have a great word about this and I've been seeing it a lot but you know uh, monarch butterflies in particular will stay in a cocoon from uh, five days to 21 days and their whole journey from egg to cocoon is about 21 days and I bring that up because I believe many of you including myself were in a season where you were dying to yourself and that scripture uh, in John 12 24 keeps popping up Unless a seed falls and dies, it's just a single seed. But if it dies, then it can produce unlimited seeds. You know, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the amount of apple trees or seeds, you know, in a single seed. Isn't that incredible? So I just want to encourage you. God still probably covered you in a way. It might have been done privately or low key. I'm feeling that for some people, even myself, even in that cocoon. But what happens in that cocoon? It is 100% death and change. That means old ways, mentalities, habits, uh, even sin habits, or it is 100% letting go of the last season. Let me say that again. <laughs> Dying to yourself, being in that cocoon season, emerging into your butterfly season is 100% change. There is no resemblance between a caterpillar really and a butterfly. It's 100% renewal and a change. And I just thank you that you know, God's launching many of you into your new season, new relationships, new things. And just remember the last leg of the race is most important. It's when it's the most challenging. It's when you want to quit. It's when your character is tested the most and your maturity. But what happens with the butterfly? A butterfly is the maturity, the ultimate maturity of a caterpillar. And I did some research and they can be in their cocoon from, you know, one to three weeks, but their actual life is only about six weeks. So it's about a you know, a third, a fourth to a third of their time is that gestate, gestation, gestation period. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, but I just keep seeing butterflies and you're about to soar. You're going to see a whole new side of you, a whole new person and everything that you've been. And I just kept hearing from multiple sources, including myself internally, that God is strengthening you. And I keep hearing that worship sound, worship sound and song. Um, but this is how I fight my battles. Even though you feel surrounded, you're surrounded by God. Amen. And even when that song came out, I, was, I wasn't I was super into it. But lately, that's just, you know, you might feel like it's just you and God. And which leads me into my next scripture, that God has separated you and set you apart. Leviticus 2022. 20, and this is basic math, basic wisdom, I call it. 
But why would God set you apart? He would set us apart or separate us for his purposes, right? He's not going to just set you apart and not use you. So it obviously has to be for his purposes. Amen. Always. Esther, Daniel, Jesus, John the Baptist, um, Amos, all the prophets. But you may feel that way. You may feel like you never fit in. You may feel like you're different and, and you have a different vibe and different thing. But God will do that to preserve the uniqueness of your ministry. Somebody really needs to hear this right now. You are going to reach people. See, the Lord's applauding. You are going to reach people that um, I'm never going to reach, that uh, I'm never going to see, that I'm never going to know. Amen. And so God will set you apart for you to preserve you, your uniqueness. It's like say you went to a church or, or you went to a business and you weren't supposed to be there forever or you weren't supposed to meet somebody there and marry somebody, whatever. Well, sometimes God will move those seasons along and separate you to preserve where he's taking you, to preserve your individual race. So stay strong. Don't quit. If you don't know what to do, you know, just start doing something or continue to do what you've been doing because the word says God directs us our steps. Proverbs 16, 9, not our thoughts. Let me say that again. God directs our what? Our steps. It's impossible to please God without faith, not our thoughts and our heart, uh, dreams and ideas. Although those are amazing and beautiful, but we speak things, we take steps, and God, according to Romans 8, 28, will make everything work together. Amen? Hallelujah. But anyways, just to bring this word back full circle, um, incredible things. I've been... I have my uh, iPhone on shuffle and these Christmas songs kept popping up. But incredible doorways are going to open this month. There is incredible payback, uh, held back finances, held back growth on your businesses, your ideas. We just break that in Jesus' name. Uh, the power of addiction. We break um, delays, demonic delays on your business growth, demonic delays on your finances. All these things are holding back the kingdom. The, the enemy is just fighting like crazy to stop Christians because... The best is yet to come and the greatest movements on earth and harvest are coming and he's fighting every way imaginable. That stuff is going to be broken. Doors are going to fly open in Jesus' name. Seven, the thief must repay seven times. I speak that over you and I agree with you. The word says if two, two more touch a thing, the word says if two or more are gathered, you're in the midst. And I keep seeing one, one, one out the wazoo. Oh my goodness. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, one. It's impossible to please God without faith. So I encourage you, if he's leading you to take a step, do it. Step out in faith. The Lord is going to come through for you. He is going to deliver. Call him the real mailman because he delivers. He does not disappoint. You're the head and not the tail. Everything you touched will be blessed. Father God has given you the ability to create wealth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are seated in heavenly places. You are, The Lord is preparing a table for you. Hallelujah. In the midst of your enemies. And I just, I just rebuke any demonic backlash that you maintain your peace and that the Lord will fight for you. The vengeance is the Lord's, not yours. Say it, the vengeance, say it with me. Vengeance is the Lord's, not yours. In Jesus' name, Exodus 14, 14, God will fight for you. You only need to be still, hallelujah. You leave me beside still waters, hallelujah. Green pastures, your rod and your staff and your word, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, 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 ever, forever, ever. Sorry, devil, I am for real. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you. Make sure you get my numbers book. You know, below your mind. Three-hour read max. Incredible foundation on numbers. And if you're a prophet or an evangelist and you need a foundation because the warfare for the last two years have been cray-cray. You know what I mean? I learned so much. I basically battled every type of spirit, principality, witchcraft, every demonic thing you can imagine. <laughs> um, but if you want to understand those things, how to defeat them, get my book, Understanding and Defeating the Adversary. Or shoot an email to me at info at one minute prophecy .com and I'll be happy to connect with you. Have a blessed and lovely day. Greet one another with a holy kiss, according to First Peter, and I'll talk to you later. My candle light, it'll never fade until that day. You're what my hopes in, in a dying world. A torch that shines, a city of